Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lies of P. Yeah, new fun game dropped on Game Pass. Woo! Always fun. Always fun new games. So, yeah. Before we dive in, uh, for full transparency sake, right, I'm all about transparency. I just want you guys to know everything up front so that way you don't think I'm ever faking anything with you guys. So, for Lies of P, I have played this for about an hour so far. Just to kind of test it out, make sure it works on my machine, see whether or not it's the kind of thing I might get into. And yeah, I was having a good time for that hour. So I think this is definitely something I can look into and get. I've also already mostly gone through the settings, which is great, but I'm going to lower the general volume a little bit so that way you guys can hear me. Let me up that a little bit and then turn up my volume just a little smidge. Let's see. Just checking my sound levels here. Okay, let's go one notch down. Okay, lovely. Cool. So I have played this for about an hour. I was having a good time. And so yeah, I think it's worth me making some videos on as I go about it. But because I've played it for an hour, I'm not gonna be surprised by the first few like tips, tricks, enemies, stuff like that, right? Now also, just for the sake of full transparency, I know that this is a souls light game, right? Uh, very, very, very similar to Bloodborne. And I'll tell you guys right now, I have played Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3, I've played Bloodborne, I've played Elden Ring, but I've never finished any of them. Never finished any of them at all, and I'm going to get crucified for that. Um, but yeah, I've never finished any of them. And the reason for it might actually surprise you guys. I'm not afraid of the difficulty of the games. In fact, I like the difficulty of the games. I'm used to dying in video games. Right? I play rage platformers, like Meat Boy and Celeste. I'm totally fine with dying. A-okay, not a problem. Uh, the first couple of times you die and you lose your souls, your blood echoes, your runes, your whatever, right? Your currency. The first, the first few times that that happens, that hurts. That sucks, right? But, you know, it's just part of the game, whatever, and you get over it. The reason why I stopped playing them is because the atmosphere... The atmosphere just gets to me after a while. I'm basically a baby when it comes to the atmosphere of these types of games. Even games like Metroid, for example, I had a hard time getting through the first little while until I got the hang of just being chased by by the SAX in Metroid Fusion or the, uh, or the Emmys in Metroid Dread, right? I'm basically a baby. So atmospheric, lonely atmospheric games where you feel like there's gonna be something to get you around every corner, I have a hard time with that, right? So you're never going to see me play horror games on here, right? Because horror games are all about that, right? So I'm not going to be playing things like Amnesia, for example. Um, I'm just, I'm not cut out for horror games. This isn't a horror game, but these are the kinds of games where I just feel like there's always an enemy out to get you around the corner. So it makes me play really nervous, and generally speaking, I don't really like that feeling, right? But I was having a good time for the first hour. So we'll see. Maybe this is the first Souls-like I complete. We're actually gonna find out I really don't know but anyway I'm gonna start a new game right I like I said I have played for about an hour but I want to start a new game for you guys so let's do that also something that's a little unfortunate <laughs> first world problems is I've got a fast computer so I can never read all the tips on the loading screens <laughs> My first reaction when I saw this was, oh my god, Persona 5. Because <laughs> I love Persona 5. It's one of my favorite JRPGs, and it starts off with a blue butterfly, too. So, <laughs> I'm like, oh no, Persona 5. That's just cool. Ain't gonna lie. That's pretty cool. Alright. We have awoken. We have awoken. We were sitting in this chair thing. All right, let us proceed. Ah, there you are. I've been looking all over for you. Oh, have you now? Well then. I see they got Jiminy too, but we have to hurry. My name is Sophia. 
Please come to Hotel Crot, and I'll explain what's happening. Jiminy, please escort him to the hotel. Alright, so here's how to use your belt. You push up and down to go from upper to lower belt, and vice versa. You push X to use it, and then you can equip items and gestures on your belt as well. There's also an extra bag, which allows you to access additional items that aren't on your belt, but you still want relatively quick access to, which is great. So yeah. Now, just like the Souls-like games, when you pause, you don't actually pause. Now maybe this is a pause, maybe settings is a pause, but I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, so Lies of P, I don't know how accurate it is to the actual Pinocchio story. I know that the Disney adaptation, which is what I grew up on, right? Because again, old ancient millennial here. I grew up and I watched Pinocchio, right? The Disney adaptation. I know that that's not super accurate to the original story. I haven't read the original story, so that's why I don't know how accurate this is, but this is basically an adaptation of the Pinocchio story. So we are P, right? Pinocchio. And Gemini, that threw me off, right? Because being the Disney kid I am, I always thought Jiminy. So when I saw Gemini, I didn't realize that it was supposed to be Jiminy from like the Disney adaptation. So things you learn. Anyway, so with Gemini, we can turn on the lantern here, and it gives us some light in the dark, right? We can turn it off and off, off and on. It's pretty nice. Okay, let us proceed. Let's get you out of there. Find something that might help. Yes, find something indeed. All right, so here. Streets are not safe. Arm yourself with one of the weapons over there. Why can't I arm myself with all three? I would like to arm myself with all three. So in the first hour I played, I chose the path of the cricket, right? Which is a balanced style, because I don't know which way I want to go. And I still don't fully know which way I want to go. But later on down the line, you have the ability to purchase these other two weapons. So I did, and I tried them out. And personally speaking, this weapon here, I... I preferred the most out of the three. Now there's obviously the stats you have to consider as well, right? The balanced one is balanced, right? Reasonable vitality, reasonable motivity, which is Dark Souls strength, basically. Reasonable technique, which is dexterity. Um, so yeah, this is your balanced character, your balanced starting point. Then you've got the Path of the Bastard, which is your dexterity-based character, right? So high technique, low motivity, so low strength, high dexterity. And then you've got your Path of the Sweeper strength, right? So this is your strength-based starter, high motivity, low technique, and high vitality to help back that up. So yeah, so I chose Balanced. I'm tempted to go this route because... Even though I haven't finished the Soulsborne games, I tend to lean more towards the heavier weapons. Because in games like this, Bloodborne's kind of the exception. In Bloodborne, you can animation cancel pretty easily. But in Lies of P here, I've noticed that when you, when you start an attack, you can't cancel out of the attack and dodge. You have to finish the attack. So when you attack, you need to attack with purpose in this game. If you're in the middle of an attack and then suddenly the thing you're fighting hits is gonna hit you back you can't just dodge out like you can in like bloodborne for example right where you can be mid-swing and then dodge out that's totally fine you know bloodborne has that bit of a get out of jail free card liza p does not so with the heavier weapons obviously longer wind up but more damage and because you're already locked into the animation anyway when you start an attack i feel like the slower ramp up isn't really as much of a detriment because either way you're locked in even with the quicker attacks. So I don't know. I'm tempted to go this route. Part of me still wants to go this route just because it gives me more options um, to try out other weapons more easily, right? Because if I choose this option, I have low technique, which means I won't be able to try out the dexterity weapons. And even though I don't like this dexterity weapon very much, it doesn't mean I won't like any others, right? You never know. So maybe I'll still go balanced. I'm not really sure. Not really sure. Again, I've only played an hour. Yeah, maybe I'll go balanced. 
Even though I don't like this weapon as much as the sweeper, I'll be able to purchase it later and switch to it, so no big deal. All right. <clears throat> Thanks, Gemini. That was pretty cool, ain't gonna lie. The ramping up of the gears is super cool. All right, let's make our way to the hotel. We're at Krot Central Station. Look, our first bad guy. Let's kill him. So you can see even with the balanced weapon, it's still pretty slow to attack, right? And then you've got the special. The special there is pretty nice. But yeah. I'm going to try this left arm of steel. I haven't really experimented with that. Okay, it does okay damage. Does it regen? Maybe? Possibly? Unsure? Prosperous indeed. Hooray, pulse cells. So this is your Estus flask, <laughs> basically. Yeah, you use your pulse cells to recover HP. By default, your pulse cells on your on your upper belt. So there's a maximum number of times that you can use it. When you reach the maximum, the cell will be discharged. If you attack enemies while the cell is discharged, then the pulse cell will gradually be charged, which in my opinion is pretty cool. It basically allows you to if you use all of your all of your discharges, right, all of your cells, you won't be able to use them anymore, right? Just like a Dark Souls Estus Flask. But if you play aggressively and you deal damage, you can regen an Estus Flask, a power, a, what is this called, a cell? What exactly is this called? Uh, da -da -da -da. A pulse cell. You can, you can regenerate a pulse, right, by playing aggressively and damaging enemies, which is pretty sweet. I think that's a pretty cool changeup. Anyway, let us proceed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, over here to the right, we can see a really angry thing beating the crap out of something. So that's going to be fun. That's going to be fun. Also, these things are creepy. The red eyes, the way that they move, it's creepy. Oh, jeez. I had to hit you four times. I'm never close enough when I start that attack. I'm I'm still a baby. I never get close enough when I start the wind up for that one. Here we go. Let's try it now. Ugh, ugh. There we go. That worked out pretty well. So I can't open the door from that side. That's unfortunate. I get zappy zapped. I get super shocked. So we don't really have much of a choice but to go this way. So we're gonna go this way. This way. It's over here. A door I can't open. Another door that way. If we go up to this big door. Yeah, we need to go kill something to get keys. So now we need to explore. All right, so guarding in this game. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of the guard in this game yet. Not sure. Because in Dark Souls, right, if you've got a reasonable shield, you can block all damage and it just eats your stamina. But basically how guarding here works is you can block enemies and it will reduce the amount of damage you take, but you will still take damage unless you parry them. Now, even though you do take damage while guarding, like in Bloodborne, if you play aggressively, you can get some of that health back, right? So you guard, you take a bit of damage, you counterattack back, you get some of the health back, right? Again, trying to get you to play a bit more aggressively, a little less defensively like in like in, uh, at least in my case, right, the Dark Souls games, I tend to play a bit more defensively. So this is trying to push you to play more aggressively. You guard and then you counterattack to get your health back. There's also the perfect guard, right, which I call the parry. So yeah, if you, if you successfully perfect guard, right, where you guard right before you get hit, you're going to get a perfect guard, which will give you a nice big flash of light to help you know that you nailed it. When it's successful, you don't receive damage. You still take a hit to your stamina, though. 
The perfect guards also apparently help destroy enemy weapons and put them in a staggerable status more easily than just racking up damage. But I'm pretty bad at the perfect guard so far, so I've never been able to really see that in action outside of me just playing aggressively and staggering them that way. So yeah. Also, just a quick note, you'll notice on the bottom right, I've got the sword and the hilt, and you'll see a bar above that. That is durability. Over time, the durability of your weapon does go down, but you do have an item here in order to bring that durability back up, which is great. So you want to keep the durability up because as the durability goes down, your weapon's attack power goes down with it. And if it goes all the way down, then your weapon's attack power significantly decreases, at least according to the tips. I've never actually let it break so far. So I don't know how bad that buff, that debuff is, but, you know. I've basically been told by the game... Whoops. <laughs> I used a pulse without needing to at all. I can see okay. Can you guys see okay? I can see okay. I shouldn't have used that pulse. That was an accident. I think I want to go down here first, if I remember right. This is just a little side path. See, like that. This is the kind of thing that makes me nervous in these games. When you have enemies hiding just around the corner like that. I, I was able to spot him the first time I played too. But that kind of thing makes me nervous. Like I said, I'm a baby. I'm a baby, but who knows? Maybe I can man up and get through this one. We shall see. We shall see how much I can man up. Look at that guy. The way they move is so creepy because they're, you know, they're puppets, they're robots. So yeah, fatal attack. I'm not gonna lie, that's badass. I love that animation, that is sick. So yeah, sneak attacks, awesome. I love that attack. And instead of being covered in blood like in Bloodborne, you get covered in grease, which is kind of cool, right? Because we're killing puppets. They don't have blood, they've got grease. Now I'm gonna swing four times on these guys because of the one time. See, I'm always checking the corners. I am so scared all the time. Jeez, what's wrong with me? Anyway. Alright, passenger's note. If anyone finds this note, get out of the station and run. Be sure to steer clear of the waiting room. I saw a huge puppet smashing people to death in there. So, yeah, don't go in the waiting room. I locked the door, but I don't know if that'll work. At least it should stop people from randomly coming in. I'm going to die soon, so I want to help you, even if it's not much. Please survive. Anyone. Sad. You hear the thumping of that guy over there? He is so pissed. He is so pissed. I don't even know why he's so pissed. He's so pissed. Again, such a cool attack. Hi, guy. See, that time I blocked it, but I didn't parry it. I saw you. I saw you try to sneak up on me, you jerk. I blocked it, but I didn't parry it, but you saw I was able to get some of my health back, right? So, it's not perfect. Well, I'm not perfect. Maybe eventually I'll get the parry down, but at least I can get some of my health back from the block. As long as I counterattack. Oh boy. This is going to be a good time. Alright, so a lock device. There are doors and ladders all throughout Krat that are locked by devices. You can unlock these doors or go down the ladders in order to create shortcuts. So this door here is locked. We tried to open it before, but we could not. But now we can on the other side. So now we've unlocked a shortcut, which is great. Now we can come back quickly in case we die, which I probably will because I am not very good at these games. And again, not really scared of death, it's just the atmosphere. But I'll get over it eventually, I think. Hey, big guy. Woo! Thank God for iframes. Ooh. 
Ooh, I didn't know. Ooh, super combo, man. He's so aggressive, so mean. Goodness gracious. Alright. So once they're staggerable, so their HP gauge will get will glow in white, and that means they're staggerable, which means you want to go in for a charge attack, which is kind of dangerous, right? Because as you can see, he's very aggressive. So while you're attacking, white outline will appear around your enemy's HP bar. When this happens, you can make the enemy staggered with a charge attack or with Fable Arts. Fable Arts might be better to use in this case, because those execute faster than a charged attack, but we'll see. Whew. Oh goodness, ah, oh, dang it. Oh well. So we died. <laughs> we died, but it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We'll get back there just fine. We got there just fine the first time, we'll get there just fine the second time. Oh jeez. I had a bit of a panic there. I didn't... I, I meant to block and I tried to swing instead. Alright, so we've got the shortcut there, which is nice. We don't have to go all around, but I still want to kill these guys. So that way I don't get into a situation where they cause me grief. Did I wake that one up? Yes, I did. See, those guys stagger when I hit them, but that mini boss guy, he does not. Okay, take two. Let's see if we can beat him this time. So here we're going to get our... What's the currency in this game called? Ergo. Ergo. That's right, Ergo. Anyway, Fable Arts. So you guys might have noticed the lines underneath my stamina bar, right? Those slots are for Fable Arts. So if you use, if you use a Fable Art without blocking, it's going to use your Blade's Fable Art. If you're guarding and then you use a Fable Art, it's going to use your Hilt's your handle or your hilt's fable art. And there are two different fable arts. They both do different things. In the case of my balanced weapon here, the regular blade fable art uses all three slots to do a really vicious, I think it's three swing kind of attack. If I guard and use the fable art with this weapon, it uses one slot and it temporarily increases my attack power. So either way, it's good. But yeah. So I think, there we go, let's go ahead and increase my attack. There we go, staggered him. That went a lot better. That attack buff is actually rather nice. I had I didn't have to do anywhere near as many attacks that time to get him. Or maybe the game, like, made itself easier for me somehow. I don't know. I don't know. But that attack buff was nice, I guess. Anyway, so you stagger him. Now you can do what's called a fatal attack. So you face a staggered enemy and you attack him. You can perform stag You can perform this fatal attack on staggered enemies. And if successful, it will inflict heavy damage. It won't always kill them. But in this case, I, th I think it kills him. Why aren't you working? Hello? Why didn't the fatal attack work? Oh well. Anyway, the fatal attack does that cool animation, and in this guy's case, I think it does kill him. But all good. So we beat that guy, we came down that way, we got his key, so now we can proceed. 
proceed. We can proceed. We can proceed. Proceed, proceed, proceed. And I only got a little bit further than this in my first hour. I died to that guy like three or four times the first time I played this, so... <coughs> so yeah. I am getting better already! I am learning. I am capable of learning. I promise I am. I am capable of learning. Alright, so we want to repair the Stargazer. So this is a Stargazer. Basically, a stargazer is a bonfire. <laughs> so use the stargazer to fully recover HP and stamina as well as charge your pulse cells, right? So recharge your Estus Flask, health, stamina. Um, you'll be revived at this, at this point in the case of death. Also remember that when you use a stargazer, the process also revives enemies. So yeah, it's a bonfire. Cool. Awesome. So let's go ahead and use the stargazer because I want to heal and get my pulse cells back. A marvelous device the stalkers used in the past. As we are, we are not strong enough to beat the puppets. But if I lent my power to this stargazer for a moment, gather ergo, clever one. This stargazer will make you stronger. But the Stargazer's strength doesn't last forever, so be careful with it. Hurry up and come to Hotel Krat. I'm not sure what it means by the Stargazer's power doesn't last forever. But I guess we'll find out eventually. Anyway, you can level up and use storage. So storage, I don't have anything in storage at the moment. All good. Let's go ahead and level up. So... This is an area that I've always overthought in Dark Souls and in Bloodborne. I never know exactly what I should level up. I'm really bad at this kind of aspect of the game. So I'm just going to make it up as I go, and hopefully there's a way to reset your points eventually. Hopefully there's a way to respec, so that way when I figure out what I want to do and figure out how I screwed up, maybe I can fix it later. We'll see. So anyway, I'm thinking Vitality, because more HP and Guard Regain, that's going to be nice. Uh, vigor is for stamina. I don't think I'm running into stamina issues right now, so I'm going to leave that alone. Capacity ups your legion and weight. I don't remember what legion is. Oh, maybe it's that legion arm there. So, yeah. So, legion is your... I think it's the bar above your... Above your legion arm, which is activated by the left trigger, in the case of the Xbox controller I've got here. Um, so you can up your legion, and then you can up your weight as well, like how much weight you can carry. Because just like in Dark Souls, there is lightweight, there's medium weight, there's heavy weight, and then there's like way over encumbered, right? Um, but I don't think I need to increase the weight right now. I my, my weight's not even half of what I can carry, so I'm doing pretty good there, I think. Motivity is strength. So weapons scale with either motivity or technique. And in the case of the weapon I have, you can see up there it scales evenly with both motivity and technique at C level. My legion arm also scales with both motivity and technique at B level. So here, I'm just going to keep things even because I don't know which way I want to go yet. And I don't want to kill my chances off of being able to use any weapon I want. And then we've got advance, which will also increase legion, but also increases your damage reduction of the various status effects. And it can also... Yeah, I think that's all it does. Cool, or at least that's all I know it does. It might do more. Who even knows? People who have played this game more than I have know. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to level up. Cool. So we spent our ergo. We've leveled up. Life is good. We're a little bit stronger now. And I've been going for about 30 minutes, so I think this is a pretty good point to end the video. So yeah, first 30 minutes so far. Life is good. Hopefully this is a Soulsborne I can finish, because I enjoyed my time with Bloodborne. I enjoyed my time with the Dark Souls games. I'm enjoying my time with this so far, but for some reason I just couldn't finish the other ones. So I'm hoping I can finish this one, and then I can go back and finish the other ones. I would love to go finish the other ones, because they are awesome games too. They are fantastic games. So 
fingers crossed that this will be the game that really gets me into the genre. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful day.